It looks like the Western world is finally waking up to the fact that the Chinese government is an absolutely massive threat. The fact that China is crying over the AUKUS nuclear submarine pact is proof that it was needed. The thing is, it's not even like the Chinese government has been trying to hide its true intentions, which, in case you've been in a coma for the last 50 years, is world domination. It makes me laugh when the usual types pipe up and say, oh, let's show a colonial map of Africa, that, let's teach the kids about how the West colonised the place. Well, yeah, obviously, we did do a bit of that, but if you publish a similar map now, it would just have the Chinese flag all over it. China is the biggest investor in Africa. They have $2 trillion worth of business interests there, more than $300 billion worth of investment on the table. If something is being built in Africa, it's probably a Chinese construction firm doing the job. They've pumped 60 billion quid's worth of aid into the continent and done lots of soft power tactics, like, for example, funding Ethiopia's larger sports stadium, which, of course, in no way compromises the integrity of the World Health Organization's leader, Tedros, uh, a former member of the Ethiopian government. Of course, that would be crazy to suggest. Anyway, while we pulled out of Afghanistan, China moved in. China isn't like us. Firstly, their leaders have a completely different attitude to us. Over here, we have elections every few years. Sometimes prime ministers don't even last one term. They have to adopt quick-fix policies and short-termism. Whereas in China, the attitude is that they're just passing through. Their leaders are just playing their role in the long marathon, the global march to global domination. They play the long game. And we're getting towards the end of that game now, I fear. China has been allowed to go largely unchecked for far too long. Whether it's building fortified islands in the South China Sea, economically colonising most of the Third World, flagrantly ignoring international treaties like the one in Hong Kong, and always, always taking an incredibly aggressive stance in the face of any opposition. And, of course, committing rampant hum human rights abuses in their own country. They've been allowed to amass soft power everywhere, whether it's making sure millions of their citizens come to British universities to the extent where they almost fund those universities, investing in British nuclear plants, even twinning with certain rural English towns such as Kendal in Cumbria, twinned with Nanshan district in the Shenzhen province. Of course, that has nothing to do with the fact that Kendal is relatively near one of the UK's nuclear plants. And they spy on everyone all the time as well, in a big way. They bugged the African Union offices. Huawei was considered a front for China to essentially have access to all of our data. The Chinese government is a genuinely malevolent force. Huawei obviously denied this. Uh, we need to stop this madness. We need to stop giving China all the power. Look at what happened when the pandemic kicked off. I mean, it's questionable where and how the virus started to begin with, let's be honest. But regardless, China basically deliberately allowed this thing to spread around the world. And where does all the PPE come from? China. We have a huge trade deficit with China. They have a tight grip over large parts of our economy. We need to stop buying so much stuff from China. We need to look closer to home. It's not as simple as just saying, oh, well, let's just buy British, but it is a bit simple as let's maybe stop buying so much Chinese. Something's brewing here. It feels like there's something big around the corner. We need to get real quick. China is a massive problem for the Western world, and if we don't wake up to it soon, it'll be far too late.